So moving on to the next part of customizing the wheel, we will be drilling uh, through the back of the wheel, straight through the pan. Now it's important that you have the right size drill bit. Um, you don't want it to be too loose and you don't want it to be too tight either. You want to kind of stay uh, or try to get as perfectly matched up with the size of the hole um, to help keep your angle drilling in as straight as possible. If you go anywhere off axis, you're going to get a wobble. So in this case, it would be this bad boy right here. This is a 31 64th. Um, but this might not be the same size you're using. It depends on the car. The shafts are all different sizes. So some wheels don't have this, but this wheel actually comes with a bushing. Um, this guy right here. And this is actually what you're going to be lining up your drill bit with um, to make sure it's the right size. And basically you need to have it in there once you're making your drill through to make sure you know it's snug um other than that you're going to have this all this play and you really don't want that while you're drilling there's a few ways that you could drill through you could you know you could drill through by hand i used to drill through by hand um you have to make sure that you're holding it at an angle where it's you know you you gotta eyeball it and try to get it as straight as possible um you know sometimes you're successful sometimes you're not um, you just, you know, do your best. Uh, but moving forward, you know, if you have a press, this drastically increase your chances of not being off center, um, uh, because, you know, it goes straight down. So I'll be placing the wheel on here, kind of drilling through, make sure everything is precise. And, um, with the press, you know, you have less of a chance of any wobble. So if you have a press or could get um, a hold of one or know someone with one, then you might want to use it. Other than that, you could use a hand drill, but just try to be as straight as you can. What I like to do during the whole setting up process of the uh, press, um, after I adjust my height, I like to make sure that everything is, is leveled. Um, because if it's, you know, off by anything you're gonna get a wobble the whole point of everything that I'm doing right now is to not get a wobble so that's the most important part of it um, seems pretty uh, straight I have my tape here uh, this is to protect the outer lip of the uh, rim or pan um, as you're drilling because sometimes you know once you go through you know if it if it gets loose in your hands and it just starts spinning, you don't want it to just kind of scratch the whole thing around. Um, especially in some cases when they're painted, that, that could be a pain. So that's what the tape is there for. So we're gonna go ahead and place this on the uh, press. And uh, get ready to drill through this. I think I'm gonna need both hands for this one though. And there you have it. Once you've made it to this part, you can actually get a little creative. Um, I've seen people uh, try uh, making wheels before and they actually leave this piece um, the way it is. I personally like to kind of hide the background. And um, so usually at this point, I'll add like a black wrap to the background and kind of cut out uh, eight inch wraps, four of them for each wheel and give it a, a more of a feel of like a wheel, like it's a real uh, aftermarket wheel look to it. I'll be using this scrap piece of vinyl to kind of show you uh, what I mean. Um, I'm gonna basically take the pan back out and I'm gonna kind of place it here and cut around it to get the correct size so I could in turn take it and put it in here. and. Uh, We'll have our background to kind of hide, um, you know, the, the whole pan look. I'm not going to time lapse this because it's going to be fairly quick um, since I'm only going to show you one uh, right now. So basically, you have your paper, you have your pan. 
kind of put your pan in the center, you take your uh, trusty box cutter and you just go around it and as best as you can. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's, you know, it's basically a background. But, uh, I don't like throwing things on the ground. But, uh, yeah, this is what you have. So then you take it, you kind of stick it in the center. And you press the center, and you will see an imprint uh, off the actual center hole. So there now, you take your blade and just kind of cut around it. Once again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Because most of it won't be seen and this is what we have right now now let's make sure that's clean and from there you will take your vinyl peel it off and Going from, you can fold it in half, it'll probably help you this way. <clears throat> fold it in half, and you place it as best as you can in the center. And just kind of spread it out from there. Now, if you have one of those uh, squeegee type tools, that would be uh, very effective right now, which I really do. Um, but... I'm going to do it assuming that not everyone has that. So I'm doing it by hand, I'm just kind of using my finger to get the air bubbles out. And I'm going basically from the center out to help push it towards the edges. And then once I get around the edge, then I just kind of go around it. And this is what we have, a uh, black background. Nice, neat and simple. Now, from there, you could uh, either stop there and now put your face insert um, of whatever design you uh, feel for, or you could get um, a little more creative with it and try to add like a brake caliper or whatever like that. I know a lot of people don't like um, the, the brake caliper because it spins with the wheel which looks pretty stupid um, in, you know, in most people's opinion. Um, but it also is a really nice look to it. Um, so depending on the design, I guess, of the wheel is whether you, you could or you should or whether you'd use one or not, pretty much. Um, if it's like a five spoke design where it's a lot of open space, then you might want to fill that space with something like a rotor. Um, but if it's more of like a mesh type like design, uh, kind of like a BBS or uh, anything with a lot of spokes, then you don't have to worry about it. Um, you know, basically, in my bills, if it's a lot of spokes, I don't use it. But if it's a lot of space in between and it just seems like something is missing, uh, definitely add a rotor and a caliper. So, uh, actually... have a few sitting around that I could show you um, and so you know you just kind of place it in the center and you know line it up as best as you can and uh, they usually have these little pieces uh, you know some wheels come with them that have these little tabs that actually clip into the plastic um, this particular wheel that we're working on don't come with rotors it's just a, a black blank background um, um, but I do have, you know, spare parts from other builds that I've done. So I have a few of these. Um, I usually will cut off these tabs to try to get it to sit as flat as possible. And with hot glue, you just kind of go around with it, go around it once with the uh, hot glue gun, um, if you have one. And you 
sit it in the center, let it let it dry, and you come back and you have your rotor and caliper uh, type thing going on. And then from there, you can add uh, your custom uh, laser cut face or um, a retrofit face from another model. So just you know, kind of drop it in and. Uh, with the caliper, you'll definitely have to make a spacer for the center to, you know, raise the uh, wheel a little bit. Um, but you have a look like this pretty much um, when you're, everything is said and done. So, um, like I said, this is a two-inch pan. A uh, three-inch pan definitely would give you a deeper look. Um, but it also depends, like I said, on the width of the wheel itself. So, now without the uh, rotor set up, this is how it will look. You could actually push it in further and get uh, you know more of a lip and a better look. So that is that. Um, as far as the faces, uh, if you know someone who has like a laser cutter or even a 3D printer, you could have them cut or print you uh, inserts um, that could basically drop right in, and you know you already have the outer part, so um, you can just go from there. Um, one thing that you do want to keep in mind, however, is because this is an 8 inch pan, you don't want an 8 inch face. You want to go like a millimeter or so smaller. So if you're going to do an 8 inch pan, then you might want to do like a 7.9 face, 7.95 or you know something like that for this to drop in this is actually 7.9 uh inches out of diameter for it to be able to drop right in the eight inch pan so um yeah don't make uh the mistakes i made earlier on in the game and uh go a millimeter less or so once you've drilled your holes and you have everything lined up um the way you want it to be then from here you will pretty much glue all around the outer rim um this is the first of many videos that i will be doing um as far as wheels because there's you know still a lot more i want to teach you as far as what's involved um and as we get to into the more intricate designs um i'm just gonna kind of work you up into that if this one is you know you didn't get all your information or you felt like i left some stuff out um let me know and i will address it in the next video um, however, uh, this basically should give you just the basis of how to get started and how to, to, uh, customize your, your own wheels. That is all for now. Thank you for bearing through this whole long drawn out process.